I'm going to take a look at Microsoft in this video. Uh, I'll go, go through my trading indicators that I use. I'm looking for trades, determining entry points, and uh, just in general try to teach you part of my trading strategy so that you can do it uh, for yourself. Uh, you're going to see a lot of my indicators here today. Uh, you can see how to set those up in the description below so you can set them up on your charts. What I've done is I went ahead and brought Microsoft up here on the chart for you to look at. A couple of things I'd like to point out. Uh, this dotted line here is actually a trend line that I drew in from the weekly chart. Uh, weekly chart. And these uh, solid lines or trend lines that I've drawn in from the daily chart, they look pretty solid to me. So we're going to start with a Bollinger Band uh, indicator, give you an idea of how it works and what it's showing me on Microsoft. You know, a couple of things, I've got a couple of gap ups here. Uh, that's good strong price movement, 352 week high. And it's continued to push through this 52 week high, including today it hit a new 52 week high. Uh, from a Bollinger Band standpoint, as I look at this trade, you know, one thing you can tell is it's trading above the one ATR range and it's really pushing into the two. You're getting a lot of separation here on the Bollinger Bands, which uh, means the applied volatility is probably going up on this. Uh, you know, if, as I look for a, a decision point on some sort of trade, though, uh, the one thing I do know just from my, uh, from my indicators and the strategy that I trade is there's no way I can go long right here. You know, it's at a 52-week high. It's pushing the Bollinger Bands toward the top of the end of the Bollinger Bands. You know, we had a 3 ATR break here. You know, yes, if you had bought here, it would have gone up. You would have made money. In fact, this probably was the only candle that I would have considered a long, even though it is extended off the mean. But uh, yeah, I would have considered a long here. But really, none of these other candles to me were screaming go long. Uh, a lot of people probably would have taken this one. Uh, my problem with this one is this trend line it was bouncing up against, which it did end up uh, going above and using for support. Yeah, so I may, I probably would have missed that trade. Uh, right here, I do not see a long entry. If anything, I would almost look for a, a consolidation or a pullback into this main area or this daily trend line. You will have to break this weekly trend line, however. And, and that's one interesting thing I'd like to point out on trend lines. You know, when I drew this trend line, it was back through here that it was showing the support. As you can tell, it broke lower. And I extend my, all my trend lines all the way to the right. So that means they go on forever once I draw them. And what you will find a lot of times is even though this was an uptrend line uh, that, that broke, it comes back into play again. And you can see it popped over it here. There was a fight for control around this trend line showing uh, resistance. Then it popped above it. And then look right through here how well it has bounced off a trend line that I drew probably back in this, this range somewhere. It's just been on this chart ever since. And even here, you, know, you look at the resistance that old trend line gave you. And that's one reason I've drawn them out so that you can see them you know, infinitely into the future because a lot of times they do come back into play. But it's also one reason I tend to draw weekly trend lines and not a lot of daily trend lines or the chart just gets really complicated. So I really put a lot more stock on those weekly trend lines. Because just from a Bollinger Band standpoint, I really don't see a buy here. You know, if, if you're doing some sort of trade, I would trade something looking for a consolidation. But really, I would like to see some sort of candle indicate, you know, I've got some consolidation here and it's not going to keep pushing higher. And I just don't see that on the Bollinger Band. So to me, there's not a trade to be had here. You could probably get a pullback below this 1 ATR and maybe look for a long. But I would have to see some other things before I, I would make that type of trade. Let's take a look at my other one of my other indicators. And this is my wave indicator. And the way it works is typically I'm looking for, for a buy zone in this area here. The, the yellow line is where I typically would want a buy zone. And once you start pushing this 2 ATR line here, you know, this is, is kind of no man's land. You know, I just I can't go long pushing this line. And I can't go long this far away from my, my uh, wave. So if I'm looking at after this gap up, you know, again, this this right here, possibly this one, well, actually, this one would not be because it's at that 2 ATR. So this right here was the only real candle that had any potential as a long to me. And it's still 
a pretty good ways away from the top of this wave. So it would have been a high risk trade for me if I decided to take it because my stop would have had to be either been here or even down in this area. So yes, you know, if I was if I was looking at this indicator right here, kind of, and real, ironically, it's the same point as where the Bollinger Band showed a potential long. And just this candle formation, I might have been along here. Uh, one thing, as I look at you know Microsoft and how it's, you know, really right here was all choppy. You know, the wave didn't have any real up or down move. You know, here it's moved up again, so you, you can probably look at it more as, as a, a valid indicator. But right through here, it really didn't help us any. And that's another reason I, I use more than one indicator. I don't use just the wave. I don't use just the Bollinger Bands. I don't use just my uh, moving average. I look at all three. I look at my candle patterns, and, and I pay attention to my tr to trend lines on the weekly basis more so than the daily. Let's take a look at the next indicator. These are my moving averages that, that I use. Uh, again, how, how I set these up is all in the description below. So you can see, you know, these, the, the red, the blue, and the yellow are, ex are uh, exponential moving averages. And the, the white solid is a 50 simple, and this is a 200 simple. Uh, what we're seeing here is the 50s moving up, showing I've got an uptrend. The 200's been up for a while, showing we have an uptrend. Uh, the 200 really has not come into play uh, uh, really since about right here. It would be the closest after it was crossed over, uh, where it really showed any su uh, support for the up move. Um, so, yes, it, all it's doing is telling me there's a longer-term trend here. Uh, it's, it's kind of extended away from it, which is... You know, a little concerning. I, I'd like to see it pull back. Uh, you know, I'm over both of my, or all three of my uh, uh, extended, move, or my exponential moving averages. It's extended way above those. So again, that's another sign to me I can't buy. You know, if I wanted to do a counter trend trade, I would be looking for something, you know, for a pullback or, or at least a consolidation uh, that I would have a pretty tight stop on. I think that's more likely a trade or a higher probability trade if you're trying to look to get into something. But there's just no way you can go long here. You know? And there's no way I can go long this far away from my, my moving averages. Just as I said in previous videos, I mean, I'm sorry, in the previous screens with the, using the Bollinger Bands and my wave, this candle right here is the only one that gave a potential entry is it hit this EMA here. Uh, on all three of my indicators, this was the only candle that really gave you a potential entry. And it would have been uh, probably a higher risk entry anyway. So the only good news is, is you could have put your stop right here, which would have put you below, you know, this EMA anyway. So you'd have this EM EMA for support. You would have had, you know, this uh, pivot low for support. Uh, this trend line was really was drawn based on this candle. So you really couldn't use this trend line until you got to right here, but in reality, you would have had that trend line for support too. And as you move toward the right, you're going to get support. You're going to pick up support from this EMA. So this was the only one that had a potential entry. Uh, I probably wouldn't have taken it, but it was there. Uh, we are still moving up. Uh, there's no reason at the moment to, you know, say that tomorrow it's going to just drop back down. But I do believe, from a probability standpoint that it, it's going to have to, to pull back down and relieve some of this upward pressure. Uh, for my trading, because all three of my indicators are telling me that this is not a good trade, I, I would not be making a trade here. You know, I've got a big gap here between you know, this EMA and this EMA. I'm well above my EMAs. Uh, it's just, it would be really high risk still long here. I would feel more comfortable with a short. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't pulled up the implied volatility. You know, one potential trade here might even be a, a calendar, if, the, if implied volatility is low enough, uh, a calendar put at, at 146, possibly 147. Um, that would take advantage of, of an expected uh, consolidation, and then you could put a stop. Because you're a 52 week high, you're, you're honestly, you're, you're guessing where your stop would be. I would probably put a stop uh, around over 150 because it's a round number. Uh, you know, you could do 149, but th that one's more likely to be breached than the 150. So you'd have to be somewhere above 150 to stop if you're thinking it's going to move down here. And then you could, I would be very aggressive as I move my stops down if I did get into this trade. 
Um, you know, you, you can see here we had the same consolidation pattern where, where the uh, EMA's moving averages were really kind of useless in telling you what direction this was going to go. Uh, you could have traded it off the Bollinger Bands here, just looking at the mean and, and bouncing back and forth between them. But this would have been a very, very difficult zone to trade in. And, you know, not all of my trades are successful. Uh, anybody that tells you they're 100%, they're lying to you. Uh, no one has a strategy that's 100% successful. Uh, now, I have seen some commodities traders that will, that will basically buy at a, a 25, lower 25 percentile of the uh, all-time lows, and they'll just keep accumulating until it goes up. See, so, they've probably got close to 100%, but keep in mind, they've got tremendous drawdown, and they've dedicated themselves to writing that no matter how far down it goes. Now, that's a very dangerous way to trade, not the way I trade. You know, I have stops and, and I get stopped out. I have profit targets, which I haven't really gotten a lot into my profit targets on this channel. Um, right now, all I've showed you is the Bollinger Band profit targets. I do use Fibonacci levels too, and I'll do some videos on that in the future. But uh, right now, just taking a look at Microsoft, to me, it's kind of in a no man's land. I, I do, certainly don't want to go long here. If I had to do something, I would be leaning towards some sort of consolidation or even a short. Um, uh, but there's really nothing that it's showing me, telling me yet that it's going down. I would pay very close attention to these candles. If I got a candle that was you know, showing a downward move, such as maybe, that's not a perfect one, but like this count, this uh, you know, move down here, this wick here, or this wick here, you, know, you could take a look at it. But, but I would expect, barring some sort of outside news or outside event, I would expect after the pullback for it to resume an upward trend, uh, just based on, on what I'm seeing on the chart. If you have any questions, let me know. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like this video. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And if there are certain stocks that you'd like to see me take a look at more often, you know, I try to do a number of these each week in addition to some of my other videos just to show you what how my indicators work and to give you an idea of what I think the market's doing or the individual stocks are doing. Um, like I said, it's all probability based. Uh, there are no guarantees in, in trading, so be sure to manage your risk and don't risk more than you get prepared to lose. Anyway, like, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks.